I hope that I don't have PFAS in my water because I've been drinking this tap water before getting this water filter. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Arkin U1 Countertop Reverse Osmosis Water Filter. This water filter has some of the best bells and whistles to compared to the available options on the market. But not only am I going to talk about the features in this video, but I also want to talk about how well this water filter actually works at filtering water. So I sent some samples to a lab to see how well it actually filters out contaminants. So let's get right into it. is one of the most expensive countertop reverse osmosis filters out there on the market, at least the ones that I was looking at. The cost is $750 for a new version. They also do sometimes have refurbished ones available as well. Plus you'll also have to consider the cost of the filters. So they sell a two year filter bundle for $290. So per year, that would be $145 worth of filters that you have to get. You wouldn't need to buy that the first year, but afterwards you would need to buy filter replacements. Just putting it out there, our Ken has absolutely no idea who I am. I purchased this completely in full on my own. I do have just a referral link that they give everyone who purchases. It will give you 10% off if you do want to purchase the Arcan E1. But again, this is not a sponsored video. I'll try my best to share honest pros and cons in this video. But if you do want to use that referral link, it does give me like some credit back as well. So check that out in the description if you are interested. The Arcan E1 comes pretty much fully ready to go right out of the box. All of the filters and everything are already pre-installed. So you don't need to worry about that. The only thing that does take a little bit of time as far as the setup is you do need to go through a rinsing or a flushing process. And all of that really entails is you need to fill up the container with water or the reservoir with water and let the whole system run all the water through a few times. It recommends just to do this a few times, like two or three times, but I did it more like five or six times just because I did read some reviews online of people who did this fewer times. And they ended up saying that the water tasted like plastic until they rinsed out a few more times. So I did it a bit more and I did not have any of that plastic taste. It tasted perfectly clean the very first time. Another thing to keep in mind is a lot of the online reviews say that people were surprised at how large this device is and they weren't expecting it to be so big. So definitely make sure to look at the dimensions and compare it to your kitchen space before purchase. Thing. In particular, I would say make sure you look at the height of the machine compared to the height of your cabinets. At least for me, there's not that much clearance between the top of this machine and my overhead cabinets. So just keep an eye on that. Now let's talk about all of the bells and whistles and special features of the Arkin U1. So probably my favorite feature is the instant temperature controls. So you can get instant cold water and instant hot water. So there are six different temperature presets. So it's normal, cold, milk, coffee, tea and hot. And then for each of those presets, you can choose the specific degrees Fahrenheit that you want the, the water to come out as. So I love this. I think it's just so easy to get hot water, cold water, anything you want. And I've been really impressed with how quickly the temperature controls work. Like you can press hot water and then within like two seconds, hot water is coming out. So I've had no issues at all with the hot water. The only thing I've had slight issues with is sometimes I found that if I try to get ice cold water and use the cold setting immediately after I've just refilled the water tank, sometimes it doesn't come out that cold and it comes out more like room temperature. So that's been my only criticism, but 90% of the time, even the cold water works just fine. It's not been too big of a problem. Also, the other major setting is the size control. So basically there's two different size presets. There is a small cup and then a big cup. And then the small cup, you can choose if you want it to be five, seven, or nine ounces as the presets. And then for the big cup, you can choose 10, 12, 14, or 16 ounces as the preset size option. Again, I found that the size works pretty well. I do wish they had an even bigger option as far as the big cup because 16 ounces is not really enough to fill up like a normal water bottle, which might be like 20 or even like 32 ounces. So I normally, if I'm filling up my water bottle, I'll need to run the process twice. So I do wish they had a larger preset option. Then the next setting is the lock feature. So basically what the lock is, is it requires you to press this lock button if you're wanting to dispense any of the hot water preset options. So this is great if you have kids in your house and you don't want them to accidentally scald themselves with burning hot water. Personally, I do find it a bit annoying. I wish there was an option to just disable the lock because it's just like an extra button I need to press in order to get hot water, but it's not that big of a deal and it does add some additional safety. And then final.
only there is a hydrogen water option which will add hydrogen to the water personally i haven't really used this it is optional so you can feel free to turn it on or off whenever you want but it is available if you'd like to use it now let's talk about the process of refilling the water because i'm going to be honest that is probably the thing that is the biggest chore and annoyance when it comes to the Arkin U1 and really just any countertop unit. So if you already have a countertop unit, then you know this already, but if you are just considering a countertop reverse osmosis filter, this is just something to consider. So for me, I, live in this apartment with me, my husband, and then our cats. And basically it's the three of us drinking the water. I drink the most water because I'm here. I work from home, but my husband works outside of the home and he drinks like just maybe a few cups a day out of this thing. And I find myself needing to refill the water at least once a day. More often it is twice a day. And it is a pretty manual process because the water can be pretty heavy, especially if you need to carry it a far distance to your sink. So just to actually be be able to say how much the water weighs when it's in this container. So when you're just dealing with the wastewater, so you're taking out water from the machine, it weighs about 10 pounds. And when you're putting in fresh water, there's more water in that compartment. So the whole thing weighs about 16 pounds. So I think for most people, it should be totally fine. But if you are buying this for someone who maybe has uh, mobility problems or may have trouble like physically carrying around a container of water. So my recommendation would be, you know, you know, just check in with yourself about your physical limits and then try to position it as close as possible to your sink. That will make it as easy as possible. Now let's talk about lab testing. So one of the main reasons that I purchased this water filter and I started looking for water filters in general was specifically because of PFAS or forever chemicals. Feel free to do your own research on it, but PFAS in my opinion are super scary. They can cause things like brain tumors. There's all sorts of sort of unknown health effects long-term from these types of chemicals. It's basically the type of chemicals that you can see in like Teflon and things like that. And one of the things that was disappointing is when I started to look for water testing options for PFAS, I found that there's really not that many out there. So most of the testing kits that are broadly available online and sell like city testing water kits do not include PFAS. And some of the companies that sell PFAS tests, they're like $300 for one test. But I did come across this company called Cyclopure and they make a $79 test specifically for PFAS. And this is the only thing they're testing for. So their lab really specializes in this PFAS testing. And so I reached out to them and I asked them if they would be willing to send two of their tests um, in order to do this review and be able to test my water before and after. And they agreed. So thank you so much to Cyclopure for sending me these tests. I am really excited to see the results. I hope that I don't have PFAS in my water because I've been drinking this tap water before getting this water filter, but in some ways it would be helpful if there is some PFAS to see if it is able to be filtered out by the Arcan U1. And another thing that's cool about this water kit is you can test it not only in tap water, but even like a river or stream water. So if you're doing sort of more environmental research or something, like this could be another really good option for that. So basically they have gloves and then you run your tap water up until the fill line. You dip the cup in water and scoop up a cupful, and then you drain the water Water, and it basically goes through the drain for 20 to 30 minutes. So this is actually pretty cool because you don't need to ship like cups of water out in the mail. So it's much more lightweight and convenient. It basically just like drains through this draining system. So yeah, I'm really curious to see how this works. So let's get started. test results back and bad news and good news. The bad news is there were in fact PFAS in my original water sample of my tap water. So of the 53 different types of PFAS that they look for, PFOA and PFOS were both detected in my water. The good news is that in the filtered water sample, the PFAS were completely filtered out. So in the filtered water sample from the RKM U1, there were no detectable PFAS whatsoever. Now, of course, there is a limit to what can be detected. So it's possible there could still be some very small amount of PFAS, but it's just not reaching the minimum to be detectable in the sample. But either way, I will take it as a win that there was a reduction and there's none of that detectable amount of PFAS still in the sample. So I was really reassured to see that. I was honestly 
I'll say a little bit nervous because the RKB1 does have plastic components, in particular like the water jug. So I was a bit nervous that just filtering my water through these plastic components would maybe even introduce new PFAS into the water sample, but it doesn't appear to have done that. So obviously I am very relieved about that. I hope you found this video helpful if you're considering the Arkin U1. Let me know any other questions you have down in the comments. I will do my best to get to those. And until next time, bye.